I have read <coughs> almost all of the letters to the editor in the opinion columns of the Newport Daily News, Providence Journal, and the Portsmouth Times. All of these papers have allowed candidates and political party leaders to get into print with comments they believe will influence voting. What's always missing is the promise to provide a tally sheet that would make it easy for voters to see what was actually accomplished as time moves on. Campaign promises that have no way to be measured are the order of the day. When someone says they are for jobs, what does that actually mean? In one sense, all the advocates for these several bond referenda on the 2016 uh, ballot are looking at the union and government employee hours that will be created as job creation for the faithful. But these jobs are being supported by government borrowing that gets paid by taxpayers now and forever. Where are the leaders who say that they will attract real companies to the state, companies that make money and have good jobs? Rhode Island is failing that litmus test. We haven't been able to do it and are changing nothing about the way the state does business that might change things. I recall Fortune Magazine's June 2016 edition where they analyzed the top 500 U.S. companies. These were the big guns. Rhode Island had four that made the list. CVS at number seven, Textron at 209, United Natural Foods at uh, 335, and Citizens Financial Group at 486. These are the folks with thousands of employees scattered all over the world. Massachusetts had 12 companies on the list with a total of 596,495 employees. But how about the category of the 100 fastest growing companies in America? That list appears in the September issue of Fortune. You got on that list if you had performed well in the last three years in terms of your revenue, profit, and stock returns. The magazine made the comment that the list reflects the rise of small banks and other financial institutions. The comment was that the rejuvenation of customer-focused competition is crucial for the economy, and this list captures the revitalizing moment when corporate buds turn into flowers. Okay, I got the point. So there is growth out there in the marketplace, but it doesn't seem to be happening in Rhode Island. There are zero Rhode Island companies on the fastest growing list. Massachusetts had five, Connecticut two. So if we had few on the biggest list and none on the fastest growing list, how did we do on the list of best small and medium sized companies to work for? The Fortune November issue had the two lists. The magazine sent out surveys and got 52,000 returned. They wanted to know what makes a job meaningful. They looked at sense of mission, trust from managers, and autonomy for workers, as well as the culture of teamwork and communication. They chose the top 50 small companies with 10 to 99 U.S. employees, and again, the top 50 of medium-sized companies, 100 to 999 employees. We frequently hear that the growth of smaller companies is more indicative of real growth than any other measure. So it would be best if a state could show that it is attracting this kind of company. The revenue growth at the companies on both lists averaged three times that of those that were surveyed but didn't make the cut to be on the list. So how did Rhode Island do? Zero would be the answer. So when you are chatting with the many candidates who have won election in Rhode Island, you should start the conversation by asking them all if they are acquainted with all these various lists then hand them a list that will guide them to the creation of a climate of business friendliness. That list is actually shorter than you would think. Just tell them to match all the rates and fees in Massachusetts. Tell them to repeal all the laws that have given the advantage to public labor unions. Tell them to give the governor some power like a line item veto. Tell them to change the climate that is causing retirees to leave the state. And I guess you might as well tell them that being a sanctuary state has not helped the economy out. It's the little things that hurt growth. If you spend $334 million for a computer system that will allow one third of the state to get welfare and that system doesn't work, should you get rid of those currently in charge? Of course. I guess those same people are behind the suing of Hewlett Packard over the DMV computer system. What state office and which personnel were responsible for managing those contracts? We have a problem, folks. Thank you for watching, and God bless.